If you want to know why CEU courses are ruining our profession, especially sports and orthopedic PT, you need to hear this episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, welcome all new listeners and welcome back to those who have heard my content in the past. If you want to know why CEU courses are ruining our profession, especially sports and orthopedic PT, you need to hear this episode. Uh, welcome uh, to the podcast, everyone. I'm excited about this episode. Uh, this was stirred up from a conversation that I was having with one of my team members, and you have to hear it. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in it, and I think it's going to help you dramatically in your practice. Uh, before I go on to the podcast, um, I always like to share what is happening uh, in my life, uh, in my family's life, and all the above. Uh, I'm just coming off of a two-day uh, leadership uh course um, on Monday and Tuesday, and I am coming back renewed. Uh, I was telling uh, someone on the team today, they said, oh, so what did you learn? And uh, uh, with every course, I learned a couple small things. And, and uh, part of this podcast, I'm going to share some of those tips, but I always come back with a really good understanding of um, what I do for people, uh, both on the leadership side, mentorship side, uh, on the patient care side, um, as a parent, um, they're all kind of the same thing. You're always trying to steer people in the right direction. So with, you know, my kids, I'm always trying to um, develop them as people and, and give them good tools so they can make the best decisions for themselves. And that concept alone is really is what about is what this podcast is about uh, with my wife, um, always trying to develop that relationship where um, our communication is strong. Um, and then with my team, uh, also trying to create uh, really strong, independent uh, self starters. Uh, it's a big thing for me. So coming off of this uh, uh, mentorship course, I'm, I'm renewed. I'm trying to change the planet. So I'm, this podcast is one of the, the first places that I'm sharing everything. So I'm excited about it. Uh, let's see. My kids are doing great. Uh, if you followed my last two episodes, uh, my son Jacob is 11 months old. And he is officially standing up with no hands, not touching anything. And he took it. He didn't take his first step, but he like pivoted. And I saw it. Like he pivoted 90 degrees and took us pivoted on one leg and onto the other side. There was no forward advancement. So he pivoted and uh, uh, that is so close. Um, he's getting really, really, really close. Um, I'm proud of my son. Uh, my son has a flag football and he's five and he has been uh, interested in flag football, but more recently in the last probably three, four weeks, he really picked it up and I'm very, very proud of him. Um, he actually is now uh, understanding the game a little bit better. I think at that age, it's so funny. It's like, um, you can see differences in motor skills and then planning and preparation, like who's going to cut. Well, we played this playoff, uh, this, sorry, we went to the playoffs this weekend and uh, we lost in the semifinals. And it was to a team that was really good. They were actually like running passing plays at the age of five. It was amazing to watch. Uh, my daughter's doing great and she's in gymnastics. But um, yeah, that's, that's uh, everything in my life. And uh, I'm excited to share this. All right. So what is this podcast about? All right. Before you get mad at me, listen, I... I think CEUs are great. I think they have their place. I've taken lots of them and I will continue to take lots of them. However, I really think that they're not advancing the profession. Ah, oh, that's probably a better way to say this. It's not ruining, in a sense, it's ruining our profession, but it's not advancing it to the level that we can. And let me explain. With every CEU, all of us, all of us have taken a CEU course um, uh, that we loved and some that were eh, kind of average. So I, I, I totally get that. Uh, some of the best courses that I've ever taken changed the way I thought. Think about this. Every time that you go to a CEU course, what do you learn? You learn typically regional care. Right. So I'm going to there's a knee course. I might go to this one. And then there's a shoulder course. I might go to this one. There's a, a golf course, a sport specific. Right. Uh, you're going to go to an Olympic weightlifting one. That's great. Um, so that's specific to that sport. And my point to this is. You're learning regional. Education on how to better manage people. Right. And I think that's, that's great. It has its place. Uh, I had a uh, provider uh, at Sports Performance uh, tell me, I said, hey, uh, we, we did an event this weekend um, at a local uh, on-site, on-field coverage. And I said, how'd it go? And he said, uh, 
wow, it was busy. As a physical therapist, you know, in the clinic, it's like we know our hours, right? Like we know when people are scheduled, maybe there's a walk-in, but we know like our hour, our day, like outline of the full day. From 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., we're going to treat this many people. When you're on site, on field coverage uh, at a local tournament, you have no idea what's about to hit you, right? And this is typically in the setting of an athletic trainer or uh, somebody in that domain that does, manages acute injuries more regularly. And I said, uh, do you enjoy your time? I said, yeah. And they said, uh, but it was challenging. And I said, why? Is it because there's not a lot of time. You just have to think. And so not a lot of time to think. You just have to go. And I said, I understand. And um, unfortunately, some of the, sometimes you just have to, you, you, you won't be able to plan for everything. You just have to come in with a good outline. And he said, uh, if some of those people, they need, they need care afterwards but they didn't want to listen to me because they had a game right after they're in the middle of the game. I said, no, that's, that's the, always the problem with acute injury management. You're most of the time on field diagnosing things. So like a diagnostic test, special tests, or you're just getting them good enough that they can play. So the diagnostics tells you, are they a uh, green light or red light to play or yellow light? And you're communicating that to the coach. Now, when, they are back in play. They just want enough to like be able to, to function, to be able to do it. Because at that point, it's already too late. You're not going to make any dramatic changes. You're not looking at movement assessment. You're not like doing quality of movement. You're really just doing the ins and outs of, is this person safe? And how do I put this Band-Aid on enough that they can actually play and do it safely? And I said, you know, that's always the, the challenge with acute injury management that you're focused in on band-aids and diagnostics and where you make the most bang for your buck is not after the injury or the day after or the week after it's actually the months before the injuries or before the event in an ideal world let me tell you why so i used to work for the olympic training center the united states olympic committee and when I first started, uh, I'd done a residency prior. And so I'd done acute injury management. So I was very confident with that. And uh, I knew how to manage um, on-site, on-field coverage. What I realized is that in pro athletics, uh, if you're managing acute injuries, that's not a problem. But the most bang for the buck with these athletes was the prevention side. So how do we mitigate how many injuries that were coming in? And so I came in, I think, mid-season. Um, so I was in the band-aid season, uh, you know, I was, you know, you're taping up stuff, you're icing, you're like, you're just trying to keep them afloat. Uh, it's in season. So there's not a lot of movement quality. There's not a lot of assessing. There's really like, can you play this week and, or how many days do we have? And then Monday would come around. How many more days do we have? Like, you're just trying to keep them afloat the whole season. And when I realized I, I came in, I was like, there's gotta be a better way for this. And when typically in the clinic, you're thinking like, well, how do we prevent? How do we blah, blah, blah? You know, how do we assess it and look at what's the risk? So what I did was I implemented a preseason screening to look at how do we look at who's going to get hurt? So we have a baseline test to determine who's going to get hurt. And then acute injuries happen, right? If it's a, it's contact, it's not preventable in, in general, right? As long as they're, you know, the wrong place for it to the wrong time, whatever it is. But most, most traumatic injuries aren't as, uh, you, you, you can't prevent them <laughs> as regularly um, as non-contact injuries. Non-contact injuries are typically, if they're a muscle strain, uh, that's, that, that could have been prevented um, for the most part. And so when you look at this, what, why, how does this do with CU courses? Like, what does this have to do with CU courses? I realized in pro athletics that it was always about uh, managing the case versus preventing. And so for me, preventing was always better. And I was like, okay, so why am I talking about CEU courses and uh, preventing injuries? What I realized is the CEU courses that I took were on learning how to manage the injury, but they weren't on the prevention side of the injury. And it didn't teach me on how to uh, work through long-term care. It just told me how to fix the short-term management.
And now I think there's two, two parts to this that become very challenging. When you look at um, insurance, insurance is always the, the, the tough battle to win, right? Because insurance only allows people to come in when they're hurt. So we're, our whole profession is based on people getting hurt, but it's not based on people actually seeking care to prevent. Now, that's harder for people to understand until they've been hurt and they're like, oh, I just wish I would have done that better. So that's where we have the most leverage to help people long term. I spoke uh, to my team member. I said, you know, I really think that acute sideline care told me a lot about how to fix things. But instilling working in pro sports allowed me an opportunity to create preventative programs and see the impact on the decrease of acute injury management. That to me changed my the game. And what I realized, there's not a lot of CEU courses that help us think like that or have the opportunity to because we're just trying to fix band-aids. We're only trying to fix short-term pain. And now let me explain. I think that CEU courses create a dependency on us providing regional care. Meaning if we learn how to treat an injury like a knee pain, right? So somebody insurance comes in, they, they give us knee pain. So we learn how to treat the knee pain. And I think that when we get so proud to say, oh, I, I can get them better in four to six visits. I can get you fast in two visits in three visits in one visit, I can get you better. I think that CEU courses advocate for that. And you're like, Chris, of course, we're trying to get people better, hands down. But what's the real route that you're trying to do to help patients and athletes? You're trying to create independence. I think that's what we've all talked about as a, like a profession. We're like, we want people to be independent, right? And you're like, well, of course. So why is getting people out of pain bad? Well, if you just get them out of pain in one visit, right? Think about this. How long does it take you as a provider to change the way you treat? Did it take one CEU course and then you like perfected it? Did you take one movement assessment cord, uh, course and you were the pro? Did you take one ankle course and you were like, oh, I got this for the rest of my life? No problem. I got it. Or did you take one like uh, mobilization course and you were the expert in one? No. So my point is, why would you expect one CEU course to fix everything and make you an independent practitioner? It can't. It's impossible. So how can you explain that one session, getting people out of pain in one or two sessions, is going to fix their problem for good? How do you know that they, won't, they now know how to manage the injury forever now? You can't. It's not possible. So what's funny, the conversation we had was getting people out of pain fast creates more of a dependency model than seeing them for a certain portion of time and allowing them to learn more guidelines, learn how to manage themselves, learn actually how to become an independent athlete. And you're like, wait, what? Let me ask you this. You ever think about a residency? Why does a residency work for people? Because it's just consistent mentorship over somebody. That's purely it, right? It's total time, time under tension. <laughs> time, consistent communication, and improving errors. And then eventually, before they happen, and giving you a framework, right? That would be the equivalent of what's better, one CEU course or, or 12 consistent months of CEU courses. Well, the longer period of time. So how can you expect one CEU course to fix all of your problems? Not possible. So how can you expect one session to fix every athlete's problem? Not possible. So the minute you hear, I got somebody better in one visit. Great. You were the Band-Aid. You didn't fix anything. You got them out of pain, but you didn't fix the real root. And even if it's two, three visits, not possible. It's like two or three CEU courses in a year. You're still not an expert. You're still not independent. You still don't have the framework. Why? Because you have to practice it. And then you have to come back and have somebody over you seeing what that is. 
CEU courses, we only we only take, but depending on your you know your employer, you probably take only one or two a year. You're not going to be an expert by any means with one or two CEU courses. Just not possible. And those CEU courses are on not on frameworks on how to manage you know somebody's like health, nutrition, uh, total body frameworks, guidelines, bumpers, plant different plants. They're really on regions. So you have to come back for every single region. So we actually are dependent on these uh, CU courses to actually improve us when reality, it's not, it's not just one course, you have to take courses that are great in frameworks. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm not biased towards any uh, course or not, but I really enjoy when courses have, they give you a framework to teach from, and not just a uh, treatment style. So like a mobilization course a stretching course that's not a framework that's a tool that's a skill and so CEU courses I think slow us down as a profession because in reality we're teaching our patients and athletes that getting you out of pain fast and using our regional dependency or like our regional focus that like what we do, you apply to that shoulder we never instilled that actually those principles can be applied to the neck and to the back. And so whenever you see me, it's, you can try the same framework, different exercises. We don't instill that in people. And so actually they have to depend on us to keep coming back for two to three visits on the same things, but for different regions. Now, I really think that the best model is really uh, creating frameworks for managing injuries in general. So let me explain. Anytime that I um, manage an athlete, I take my experiences from pro sports and really take them to heart. Um, I remember one athlete coming to me and they said, um, hey, Chris, uh, can you help me with my back? I said, yeah, tell me the history. He said, I've seen um, multiple chiropractors, physical therapists, massage therapists, acupuncturists, surgeons, you name it. I've done it all. And um, let me tell you what I've done. And they said, um, I've done uh, core stabilization. I, here's my week. On Sundays, I do active recovery. On Mondays, I have practice. I do you know, 20, 30 minute warm up, which includes dynamic stretching, mobilization, foam rolling, whatever it is. Afterwards, I do ice bath, cold plunges. I do stretching, foam rolling. I have a massage on Tuesdays. On Wednesdays, I get acupuncture. On Thursdays, I do core work. I do uh, repeated extension. I do decompression. Uh, I also on Fridays do um, traction. And uh, I use a weight belt when needed uh, with higher load. I manage my volume and my intensity at certain percentages. And um, I'm coming to you today because it's still a little tweaky, a little achy. Um, what should I do? Most PTs would be like, oh, uh, you've actually tried all the stuff that I've done. Um, what, 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 <laughs> what do I do next? <laughs> and that was the response that I had. I was like, uh, you, you basically did everything that I would have said. And that pissed me off. That made me angry and frustrated because I didn't have a direct answer right there. I wasn't prepared for the level of intensity that came at me, the level of information. I said, hey, where did you learn all this? And they said, um, I just went to individual providers. They gave me tools and I created a framework. And I was like, let me borrow your brain. So like, wait, how do you, how do you put it all together? It's like, I basically learned from everybody and collected what is the framework that they're all providing me? And essentially they were giving me green lights to do certain things, yellow lights for modifications and red lights for absolute nuts. And I was like, that helped you? I said, yeah, because now I can take those principles to practice to the weight room or PT. And I don't have to depend on an exercise or, and they said this, they're like, um, you know, I, I don't enjoy working with physical therapists sometimes because sometimes they give me 30 exercises all to do the same thing. And um, I feel my time can be better spent maybe doing a 10th of them more often and getting care, manual care plus ACU plus all this other stuff. So I consolidated PT exercise and I said, you know, I don't want to be that PT. So I said, what are you looking for for me? And he's like, I just need your guidance on which bumper to focus on or what things I should and should do right now. I was like, oh, that's smart. I love that. And he was actually teaching me. And I learned a lot from working with these athletes that they had seen over one to 200 providers. And I just learned, what is it that you love working with these people? What are the best clinicians do? And they said, they don't tell me what to do. 
uh, they tell me where to look. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty powerful. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Yeah, they don't tell me like, they can tell me the exercise all day, but what they need to tell me is where I, what's going to hit me or what can happen if I don't do it? What can happen if I do do it? So I can make those decisions. And I was like, wow, that's called independence. And he's like, exactly. And he's like, the ones who said, I'll get you out of pain, no problem in like one or two visits, it was impossible because he was going to continue training. So it's impossible to get him to get out of pain. It was, you're going to be in pain. If you do these five things and add this, you'll be in less pain all week. And so what I realized is I call them bumpers. I call them, um, you know, red, yellow, and green light system. I call it plan A, plan B, plan C. It's all the same concept. And it's from athletes that I've worked with in pro, working pro sports and seeing what they loved and didn't love from providers. And I use it every single day with athletes, with my team, because it allows people to not be dependent on you for the drill, the exercise, or the skill. And what it allows them to do is be free thinkers and come to you and say, you know what? It's not, it's, I tried this exercise. I tried the stretch. I did this with my recovery. I've been sleeping eight hours and my diet's been good. What do you think I should look next? Imagine an athlete or a patient saying that to you and you're like, oh, easy. I, I would uh, increase your cadence, decrease your stride, move this. And you're like, oh, thank you so much. And you can't expect them to ever like, they're, they're going to need a little bit of tweaking here and there. So by only allowing them to see you one time and assuming that fixes it, doesn't give them a chance, an opportunity to build that framework because they have to have check-ins with you. They have to see if it's working or not. That's called a coach, right? Like you can't imagine a coach sort of like run a play or run through some plays on Monday and be like, all right, we're going to play on uh, Saturday morning. One time just doesn't do it, right? We're all human. We all forget. Uh, we don't know enough information. We doubt ourselves. The minute you get hurt is, a, is really the, the test. Do you really think that the exercises that you provide to people are the ones that you do? No. And you need constant feedback. So currently, CEU courses don't teach this framework on how to get people to be independent thinkers. They teach people to be dependent on the drill and exercise that you do that is temporary, that will continue to need support. But we're assuming one day of feeling better is really the answer. So uh, as I mentioned, my advice to you is continue taking CEU courses. I think they're all going to be great. Find the one, find the CU courses that provide frameworks, not just skill set based techniques. And anything, any course that I host, that's my goal. My goal is to give you frameworks so that way when you go home, I didn't teach you just what to do, I told you where to look. So you know you have plan A, plan B, plan C, three different options with every single patient and athlete. And that to you, I don't give you answers. I just give you frameworks because that is the best thing. I've been through it. I've had phenomenal mentors and that's the one thing they changed. And I got frustrated because I was like, well, just tell me the answer. Can you like, where am I going? Am I not going this way? Am I going to do plyometrics or not? What's my percentage? How much should I go up? Why don't you just tell me? And they're like, because you just need plan A, plan B. Wh which ones would you do? I'm like, ah, I would go 10%. Well, what happens if you don't do 10%? Uh, I might flare them up. So what would you do? Then I'd go slightly lower. Are you going to be aggressive or, or conservative? Conservative. So why would you even consider 10%? I guess that's better. Yeah. They just told me what to look for. Like what was going to hit me if I did the, the both directions? And I don't think CEU courses teach that. They're like, just try this and it'll work. I promise. What that does is you, you never become a thinker. You become a doer. And in our profession, um, if you really want to make a difference, you got to learn how to think. You got just don't rely on just doing and the manual treatment that's going to solve the, the answer. Ultimately, the best athletes out there have the best answers and they're just coming to you for like, which one should I do? And I know for some of you who haven't followed me for a while, this is a lot for you. You have to understand that working in the pro sports, working with high level athletes, yeah, they want to get out of pain, but ultimately they also want to learn how to fix themselves. And if you teach them these skill sets, They'll be your biggest fan forever. And I think that's ultimately what we want. We want people who uh, we create a huge impact on. 
And I think the best way you're going to do that is by learning how to create different options for people. So my homework to you is anytime that somebody comes with a question, right? So a patient says, hey, um, should I do, um, I have hip pain again. Should I, should I do clamshells? Don't make it a yes or no question or answer, excuse me. Make it a, you can. If you continue to do clamshells and it continues to flare up, here are your two options. You're either going to increase it, increase your band resistance to whatever your option is, or you're going to decrease it to this or try unloading with this. Now, what that's going to do is allow you at home to figure this out on your own. So if it flares you up, try this. And if it doesn't do anything, try this. Those are your two options with the questions you just asked. And what that allowed them to do is like, okay, wait. So he didn't really answer the question. <laughs> he just said, what else can happen if I do or don't do this? And that allows you as a provider to take the dependence on you and providing every answer to allowing them to be a better thinker and not assume that because you get them out of pain in one session that it fixes everything. So my, my ultimate goal is that we as PTs become truly like if you, if you know my passion, if you've been to my accelerator course or you're coming to my upcoming strength and conditioning summit in July, my vision is to have physical therapists become consultants or healthcare providers, not just Band-Aids. And what I mean by that is, I think we just fix knee pain within three visits. I think that's a Band-Aid. Some people would be prideful of that. Like they're like, oh, I can fix anybody in three visits. Yeah, but you're creating dependency on you because now they don't know how to fix their elbow or knee or shoulder because you didn't have time to instill your framework and support them with real information. What you did was you provided a skill, or excuse me, you provided your skill, tactical skill on them to help them alleviate the pain quick. I totally get that. But if you're looking to make long-term changes, you need to give them frameworks on how to manage future injuries as well. So for instance, whenever we have somebody who's out of pain, like, oh my gosh, my knee's feeling better. Great. Here's what's gonna happen next. You're gonna go back. You might have hip issues and ankle issues. What I like to work on is I want you to get your hips to a point where you can do this one drill, 50 reps, no problems. Your ankle needs to be able to clear that wall, you know, four inches. Um, and then you also have to work on your balance. Those all three variables have to get better. Here's your clearance. Needle wall has to be two inches away minimum in the next month. Uh, clamshells have to be up to the black band and your single leg balance, eyes closed, on a surface, blah, 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 needs to be at 40 seconds. If those are not, you're not cleared to permanently get back to run. What I would do is I would uh, work on your cadence. I would work on uh, flexibility and uh, check in in two weeks uh, to come back, make sure all those are clear. If those are clear, then you can bump out to a month. Now, next time, we're going to work on running drills. We're going to work on form. We're going to work on uh, your mechanics. Once those are better and we've got you cleared and you can do a full event, no issues, no challenges, I want you to be injury free for a full month. And what you're doing is you're creating checkpoints versus your knee pain's gone. Fly like a bird. I, I assume you're going to fix all this by yourself. Have fun. You and YouTube and Google have worked out so far and um, that worked for your knee. You can't do that to people. And I think that we are Band-Aid fixers currently. And I think that um, if, if you know my intent, my intent is to change people's lives. Don't, don't get frustrated. Don't get mad. Don't think like I'm undermining the profession. I love our profession. I think CU courses are great. But I think currently we are temporary fixes to pain. And I think pain will always be in people's lives as long as the exercise. So the real root is how to teach them to avoid pain which is teaching them about health, nutrition, sleep, everything, all the other variables, recovery. All those variables are massive. And if somebody is not sleeping, not eating right, uh, isn't hydrating, isn't exercising enough, their knee pain will always turn into back pain to shoulder pain. Why? Because they're not recovering enough. They don't have enough uh, literally tissue recovery to feel better. And the real root 
and fixing all of this is getting them to recover better, understand what tissue regeneration is, and allowing them to understand that training one day a week is like inducing trauma and is worse than exercising. So might as well train two or three days a week, fix the real root, allow them to know how to train better, tell them what hydration is, tell them how much to sleep, work on their nutrition, and then teach them all the exercises in the world, but give them a framework so that they can understand how to manage themselves. Versus, I fixed your knee pain, but didn't talk about all the recovery process after that. So you're actually going to be back in three months, um, but I'll fix you in six visits then too. And then next year, when you have a back pain, I'll fix you in three visits for that too. What you're actually doing, literally, that's worse. If you teach them a framework, a lot of times they will only be back for check-ins. Like I'm tweaking, I've tweaked this here. If you talk to a, a, a triathlete, somebody who's like high volume, high intensity, this is their mindset. They know, they know because they know how to manage their volume and intensity. They know that, hey, I rode five days last week. I only did this two days last week. And I did, um, you know, chiropractic on Thursday. I did PT on Wednesday and I have massage tomorrow. Um, what do you think I should do next? That's a huge question. That's so easy. You're like, oh, you already did the homework for me. Just try these exercises and see me in a couple weeks. My vision is to help people get to that point, have athletes be able to have that mindset, but they'll never have that mindset if the provider doesn't have that mindset. We, as a profession, I think we have an opportunity to help people prevent pain and not just manage pain. Um, yes, I think quality of movement is important, but I think the management of a person and the external variables are just as important as a management of a regional uh, center. And that's why I think CU courses are lacking. And I think that there's other professions who take more of a holistic approach uh, to managing people, um, but ours are so focused on regional um, dependence or regional focus. And to me, that's why this all came up from, you know, on-field coverage uh, for, for PTs. And uh, yeah, you know, you're, you're constantly just getting them back in the game, back in the game, back in the game with taping or whatever, like soft tissue work. And you're like, just go play again. And that's how I see clinical care. A lot of times you're like, oh, three visits, boom, back in the game. Oh, you're back in three months, uh, just scrape it, massage it, do whatever, back in the game. And in reality, you didn't have time for preseason work, which was injury prevention, set the framework, allow them to have the tools so they don't get injured. And that's why in clinic care for one to two visits and pain-free is the same as applying uh, an, a bag of ice or taping in the middle of a game just to get them back out. All you did was just keep them in the game. That's fair. Survival's good. But learning that you keep them away from pain and away from injury is massive. So um, all of this, and I'll tell you, I think that um, as we become consultants and true healthcare providers, like healthcare, not just musculoskeletal, like healthcare, like sleep, nutrition, like recovery processes. Pro sports taught me this. And now as I lead and I mentor PTs, I have realized this. I think that average PTs tell patients what to do. I think amazing PTs tell patients where to look, meaning what can and can't happen what will hit you, what will happen if you do it, and what won't happen. And what that allows them to do, make decisions on their own. Don't just tell them what to do, tell them where to look. So average PTs tell patients what to do. Amazing PTs tell patients where to look. And it's the same with coaches. You think that, um, you know, Tom Brady's coach tells them, I want you to take three steps back and then turn and pivot. And then I want you to throw that ball right there. No, on this play, watch for that left side. Uh, watch over, over the receivers uh, on this side, whatever it is. They're just telling them where to look. They're not teaching them like the micromanaging of like this, this little step here. And with patients, it's the same. Don't tell them just what to do. Tell them where to look. And think about that. I don't think a lot of us do that naturally. And um, this was a concept that... Uh, uh, changed my my framework and ever since pro sports um, I have delivered this to athletes and they love it because they're like Chris you've taught me how to manage myself and then ultimately when I need you I just know I'm going to come in with 
three different options or three different answers. And I know you'll clear it up for me. And then I know which direction to go. And they're like, most athletes that come to us, that that's their favorite thing. They're like, I just know that you're not just going to give me the answer. Um, and I don't think that, um, you know, your patients just want answers. They want a framework. They just don't know how to ask. And I think that you as a provider, change your framework. Try this out. Send me an email, Dr. Chris at Dr. Chris Garcia, and let me know how it works. The biggest thing you're going to come up with is you're like, oh my gosh, what is going to happen if it doesn't? You're going to actually have to think about this. And it's all the pre thoughts, it's all the preseason thoughts that need to happen versus are you just treating like it's in season? Are you truly just treating like it's in season, pain management and band aids? Or are you working more like a preseason management, injury prevention, framework, guidelines? and teaching them what to do and how to prevent the next one. So um, there you have it. Uh, CEU courses uh, may not just ruin our profession. Maybe they slow down our profession. Maybe they create a dependency model on our profession. I think that truly uh, there's a different way to treat people. And um, this is going to be one of the next generations of how we manage uh, individuals. And I think that if you asked any patient or athlete, they would prefer it. So that way they don't have to keep coming back. And that is truly what our profession needs and wants is independent people who can do things on their own and aren't reliant on any single person or thing. And uh, this framework is actually in line with that, more so than the quick pain out of one to two visits and CEU courses only once a year. Uh, what you might have to do is take multiple CEUs, multiple things, or find a mentor that you can regularly have to keep you on target so you can apply those things on a consistent basis versus relying on one two weekend or a one weekend course to solve all your problems, all your pains for a single year, not possible. So uh, there you have it. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. And uh, if, if you guys don't know, I'm my next course is on uh, July 23rd, uh, 24th, 2022. It's a strength and conditioning summit. Uh, this is where I'm providing guidelines and frameworks <laughs> for uh, strength and conditioning. I'm not one to give you like, hey, is it um, uh, linear uh, based programming? Is it undulating? Which one is the best? You know, what it really comes down to is what's where, where in season are you? What's the sport? Uh, I'll give you frameworks, I'll give you guidelines uh, on how to manage uh, transitioning from rehab to performance. Uh, what are some frameworks that you need to apply? Uh, not like an exact template, but a, a framework so that way you can make decisions based on the athletes you see, because baseball might be different than swimming and swimming is different than, you know, bowling. I mean, they're very different sports, but different things. And uh, you're going to have different frameworks within uh, strength conditioning uh, worlds and profiles. So for that reason, I uh, focus on that same thing. So if you're interested uh, come join me uh, this year, uh, July 23rd, 24th in San Diego or virtual if you're interested in that. Uh, very applicable. If you're going to do virtual, it's not a problem. It's the same thing. Uh, you'll get the same outcome, same framework. And uh, I'm excited. I'm really pumped to, this is coming from questions from all of you guys uh, who've been part of the world. Uh, and um, I'm excited uh, more than anything else to get in front of you guys. And it's, you know, we're uh, in a great summer uh, this year and there's, it's going to be in San Diego. Um, I'm limiting the course to 10. Um, at the moment, we have two people signed up already. Uh, I'd love to have the rest of you guys uh, filling that. And if we uh, uh, fill then more more seats then we'll have to find a different venue which uh, I'd love to have so uh, nonetheless I'd love to see you guys come on out and uh, join me for strength conditioning and everything about guidelines and frameworks and uh, I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you guys in July if not on the next episode and I hope you guys are doing well take care see you guys